Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Maestro, and today we're going to be taking the Moto Guzzi Stelvio NTX and really putting it through its paces. We're going to show you guys just what this bike is capable of. And if you like the content, as always, we would just ask that you like, subscribe, and pass the link off to your friends. And also, leave a comment below and let me hear what you think about this video and about this amazing machine. Okay, enjoy. Welcome. It's another crummy day here in Southern California. The sun is out. It's about 80 degrees. It's about 920 on a Friday morning. And Friday mornings up on the Angeles Crest Highway are the breakfast club for the car guys. So if we go up to Newcomb's Ranch, you're going to see that there's probably 100 or 150 sports cars, exotics sitting up there. So you'll probably see a few of them driving by the the back markers, if you will, on their way up to Newcomb's now. Most of them are up there already. But what we're gonna talk about today is the, my own 2014 Moto Guzzi Stelvio. And before I get into, into that, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Moto Guzzi company. If you watch my Griso video, I'll just keep it short. I am a great admirer of Moto Guzzi because they've been in business for a hundred years. They still manufacture their bikes on the idyllic shores of Lake Como in Northern Italy, one of the most beautiful places on earth. And they make bikes with character, bikes that are different from the rest of the pack, bikes that people love to talk about. As a matter of fact, a couple of years ago, I had another Moto Guzzi Stelvio and my buddy Francesco and I were going up the Pacific Coast Highway just south of Big Sur and we pull into this Vista Point and he, he's on his water boxer GS. I'm on a Stelvio just like this one. We pull in and there's about 20 motorcycles just kind of already hanging out there. And immediately they gravitate to where we park and they don't go to the GS at all. They surround the Motor Guzzi and say, boy, this thing is cool. As a matter of fact, we heard you coming up for like 20 quarters and we heard this this V-twin sound just rolling on and accelerating out of the corners. And we were saying to ourselves, what could that be? And then you pull it and it's a Moto Guzzi. Who'd have, figured, who'd have figured that? And that's the kind of reaction that you get anywhere you go with these cool motorcycles from Northern Italy. And so as I said in the Griso video, if you don't like people, if you just wanna be left alone, if you don't like talking to people, do not get a Moto Guzzi because people will want to talk to you and ask you questions and it'll be very bothersome to you. But if you like engaging in conversation and talking about bikes, as I do, um, you can get no better bike than a Moto Guzzi. And the Stelvio is a great example of this bike. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the Moto Guzzi Stelvio model range. And in 2009, I believe, they came out with the Stelvio, which was supposed to go, obviously, head-to-head -head with the immensely popular and successful BMW GS. And from 2009 to 2011, the bike was pretty good, but it didn't really match up with the GS. So in 2012, they came out with this NTX version of the Stelvio, and they put these beautiful bags on it, they changed the look of it, made it a little bit cleaner and more aggressive, and they changed the frame di diameter and the suspension. So it looked better, it was more functional, and it handled way better than the original Stelvio. So it was positioned directly against the 2012 GS, which you all of you know, if you saw my GS video, was the last of the uh, oil heads. So it was the twin cam 
and it produced 110 horsepower, which is exactly what this bike produces. So 110 horsepower from a air-cooled V-twin versus 108 and 10 horsepower from a uh, air-cooled horizontal twin. The weight on this bike is listed at 600 pounds, but I think that's a little bit of a misnomer because if you add the bags to it and the exhaust, which is this huge catalytic converter exhaust, which weighs like 35 pounds and it's a wet weight. So this has an 8.5 gallon gas tank. So you can go from like here to Colorado on a, on a single fill up. Um, maybe not quite that far, but anyway, uh, so I fill up probably five gallons, which is all I need around here. And I've taken the uh, stock exhaust off and I replaced it with a Zard exhaust, which I think you'll agree sounds absolutely phenomenal with this engine. And uh, so we get the weight down to probably it's fighting weight, 560 pounds, something like that, which is pretty comparable with the GS of the day. So the question is, is this just a cool Italian poser or can it actually get it done against the, the, the competition of its day and even against the competition of today? How does it stack up against like a R1250 GS Adventure from like a couple of years ago? And I think you're gonna be pretty impressed if not amazed at what these Italian motorcycle passionate motor builders have done with the Stelvio. And I guess I should have given a little spoiler alert in the beginning because I posted the clip of this bike just railing uh, down the street with my buddy Don following me. And so you've already got a pretty good idea of what this bike can do. So when I arrived, when I bought this bike and to let you know, I just, I sold my R1100 GS, which so many of you have watched as a, as a former a road test and I know don't send the hate mail the bike was just getting a little too old and it was a little bit uh, I needed something with a little more power so I could put my wife on the back this bike also came with the standard top box which my wife loves because she can lean back on it when we go on a two or three day trip so I sold the R1100 GS and I was thinking all right I'm gonna get either a oil head like a 2010 11 or 12 GS or maybe I'll get another Stelvio because I had a couple of these before. And I'll tell you why I, I had them and what the thing. I had a couple of these before. All right. That's it. And take. And so I was looking at a 2012 GS with like under 10,000 miles on it. Mint condition. It was in Phoenix and all stock with the bags. And he was asking $9,000, which I thought, you know, that's a pretty fair price for this bike. But I would have had to change the exhaust. The other thing I would have had to change on the GS for some reason, the seats on the GSs, all of them, maybe not the ring, were all super soft. And after like two hours, two and a half hours, you had to get up off the bike and take a little walk before you could continue riding. And so you'd have to upgrade to either a Tour Attack or a Sergeant seat or something like that if you wanted to keep this bike and I'd have to change the exhaust. So I'd be into the bike with tax and everything else for 10, five, $11,000, even if I got the bike for under nine, say eight or $8,500. And then I found this GS in Eli, Nevada, and it was the orange sunburst color, which is a very cool color on this bike. And it had like 6,000 miles on it. And the guy was only wanted $4,700 for the bike. And so I call him up and I talk to him, but he was in the middle of Nevada, in the middle of the high desert. I would have had to rent a truck, take two days, a day up and a day back to get the thing. And so I said, I'll let you know. <laughs> this bike I'd been watching for about a month was in San Diego. And I, if I remember correctly, the guy was asking like $7,250 or $7,000, which I thought was a pretty fair price for this bike. But based on the Eli Nevada bike, I thought I'd just give this guy a call and see where we could get. And I called him up and I said, look, your bike looks fantastic. This bike here only had 4,200 miles on it on a 10 year old motorcycle. And I talked to him, I said, I got this bike in Eli Nevada. I think I might have even sent him the link just so he knew, he knew that I wasn't uh, fooling around. 
And I said, look, the guy is only asking $4,700. I know that's a low price. I know that it's like a steal, but if you want to sell this bike and you want to match this price, I'll come down tomorrow and pick it up. And he said, after about two or three seconds of hesitation, he goes, let me talk to my wife. And I knew right then I was in a good spot. So I hear him on the phone. He says, honey, I have this guy that wants to buy the bike, but he only wants to give us $4,700 on it. What do you think? And without hesitation, she said, sell it. And I said, yes. So the next day I got on the back of my buddy Francesco's uh, K1200 Sport S and we two upped it down to San Diego and I picked up this bike and it is just fantastic as you I think have already seen a little bit and we'll see in the clips where we show this bike riding. And that's the thing we do with this channel is we, we don't just talk about the technology, about the, the, uh, the specifications of a bike. We actually ride it and ride it pretty hard, ride it pretty well without abusing it, but we ride it so you can see, can this bike really stand head to head with the competition that's out there today? So again, Going back to the GS video, I guess 25,000 of you watched that video and I really appreciate that. That's like amazing for my little channel. And a lot of you commented, liked and subscribed. So again, I would just ask you uh, from the bottom of my heart, if you would comment, like and subscribe and pass the link on to other guys who you think might be interested in this, we would greatly appreciate it and it will help us to grow this channel and bring you more of this cool content. All right, that's my disclaimer, advertisement over. Let's get into the bike itself. So this particular bike, when I picked it up, you need to do a couple of things to it in order to really make it work. The first thing is the exhaust, and I mentioned this, and it has the Zard exhaust on it now. So I probably lost 25 pounds by putting the Zard exhaust on it, and I don't have the DB killer in it. It came with a DB killer, I took it out, and uh, it, it sounds just magnificent, just like a, a symphony as you're going up the road. The second thing that you have to do is, because of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, whatever that is, they mandated that the turn signals on the Eurobike were too close together and they had to put them in the mirrors instead of having a clean, nice integration in the fairing. So what you have to do is call up either AF1 or MG Cycles or somebody like that and get the Euro kit, which includes these Tuono mirrors and the turn signals. And it takes two or three hours to change it up. And it makes a world of difference because in the mirror uh, turn signals, they rattle and you can't see a thing out the back. And now with these Aprilia Tuono uh, mirrors, it's just great. So that's the one thing you have to do. The second thing you have to do, or maybe this is the third thing you have to do now. Okay. The third, third thing you have to do is change the driving lights. The original equipment driving lights will short out the battery originally. Oh, well. And uh, my wife and I were coming down Tuna Canyon to Malibu, on, and we died on PCH right there uh, on my old Stelvio, and he had it had it towed up to my buddies at Pro Italia and they fixed it, but they said, you might want to replace these lights, which we have done on this bike. And again, it's a simple, just replacement and you just wire it in and you're good to go. And not only that, these are LED lights, which are a lot better than the original equipment lights themselves. And the fourth thing you must do if you ride this bike with any enthusiasm at all is, as you've watched in the Griso video, you have to take a grinder to the kickstand because on the left side, it, well, the kickstand is on the left side. On the left side, it touches down early and often. And so you have to take a grinder and so the kickstand's in the up position, you have the little foot. So I ground off half of the foot and then also the stop, which prevents the kickstand from going up all the way. I probably took a quarter inch off the kickstand and that solves the problem. No more grinding of the kickstand, which is not very recommended when you're uh, you know, hauling through these corners. What does touch down, and this is kind of okay. I mean, it is an adventure bike. It's not, a, it's not an RSV4, it's not an S1000RR. It is a full-blown adventure bike. Okay, now that you've done those four things, we're ready to ride the Stelvio and see how it actually works. And I can tell you what, that these 
engineers from northern Italy really got the thing right. It handles great. It steers unbelievable. Nice and light and precise. You can change your line in the corner. You can get bank it all the way to its maximum lean angle without any kind of drama at all. It's just very linear, very smooth. I mean, it's pretty amazing. And when you see the, the videos of a riding this, I think you'll be like blown away as I was blown away when I first rode this bike. Uh, the other thing about it is the motor, while it's not crazy uh, powerful, it's got enough power to carry a nice seven, eight tenths all day long. And it's so just pleasant just going back and forth and rolling on the throttle and using the mid-range. It develops power from 3,000 RPM all the way up to its 8,000 RPM red line. And it's just a delight to just ride each and every day. And so, uh, the Moto Guzzi Stelvio, I would say, if you're looking for a bike that is unique, is different, is going to cause all people to ask questions and have conversations, and, and you're going to meet different folks, and you still want a bike that can hang with the modern touring motorsports machinery, uh, this could be it. And it also, unfortunately or fortunately for the buyers, the market is very soft on these, so you can pick up, if you look a little bit, a nice Delvio for half the price of a comparable GS. So that's pretty cool. And then lastly, let's just talk a little bit about its namesake, the Stelvio Pass. Now, I've been over the Stelvio Pass six or eight times, and I can tell you, it is just a magnificent day on the road. It just climbs up to, I don't know, eight or 9,000 feet on all these switchbacks coming up. And one time we were sitting watching the switchbacks below and all of a sudden we hear this V-twin just revving out to eight, nine, 10,000 RPM. And we're like, wow, what is that? We can see a little dot coming up, up the pass. And as it gets a little closer, we go, oh, it's a, it's a Ducati ST4 and it's two up and they're wearing matching white and red leathers. And they are just, the, 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 the rider is just banking into these switchbacks. It's just total synchronicity with the bike and the road and the, his lady on the back. And as he's coming out of the switchbacks for each one, he's just rolling on the throttle. And I guess because he has a little weight on the back, the front wheel's just coming off the ground like 10 or 12 inches. And it's just putting it down nice and easy, just on the power rolling on. And it was just a sight to behold. And those are the kind of things that you see up on this magnificent road, the Stelvio Pass. So along with the Pacific Coast Highway up to Big Sur, the Stelvio Pass should be on everyone's bucket list if you could possibly uh, do that. So I guess that's about what I wanted to talk about. The bike came with these incredible great bags. Oh, I know what I wanted to say. The only downside of the Moto Guzzi Stelvio is these bags, which are great, nice aluminum, fairly light bags, easy to access, but they are wide. And we can split lanes in California, as some of you I know are very jealous of, and it is really amazing that we can do that. I think we're the only state that allows that, and you just go through traffic. Now, but you gotta be careful, because not only are the bags wide, it's not a light bike, and it's tall, and when I have my wife on the back and it has the other bag on the back as well, um, it can get a little bit unwieldy at real low speed. So you gotta be careful. And sometimes, you know, you're going through and you got like an inch on the side, you're like, ah, and, uh, but so far so good on this. Um, the other thing about it is because it is tall, I wouldn't recommend this bike for anybody under like five, nine, five, eight. I'm five foot 11 and I can't, in the, with the seat in the high position, which I like it riding wise, I can't quite be flat footed with both feet on the ground when I stop. So you gotta be a little bit aware of that and cognizant you can't just come to a stop and not look at where you're stopping and plan it out for a couple of seconds before you come to a halt. So that's just one thing about the, about the bike. Other than that, you're gonna see, I love this bike. It's a great upgrade. one of my favorite all-time cars. Anyway, uh, it's a great upgrade to the R1100 GS. As much as I love that bike, this, uh, this is a little bit more satisfying, a little newer, a little more power, 
and I think it handles at least as good, if not, maybe just a little bit better. So without further ado, let's take her out on the road and then we can demonstrate exactly what this bike is capable of. Thanks again, and as always, we appreciate your comments, we appreciate your liking and subscribing, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Okay, well, let's get down to brass tacks and see how the Stelvio performs among some very, very fast company. You'll see a uh, Street Fighter there. There's a bunch of really fast sport bikes. And what's the Stelvio doing in the middle of this pack? Excuse me, I think you're with the wrong group. Anyway, we'll see how the Stelvio performs going down this favorite road. My buddy Don is following me, following me and uh, doing some excellent camera work. All right, here we go. Stelvio versus the world. Okay, so here we are a little bit more in our element, chasing my buddy on a very well-ridden R1250 GS Adventure. And just a quick little walk around about the styling of the Stelvio. I jokingly refer it to as an apocalyptic insect from like the book of Revelation. I, I love how it looks and uh, it's just very cool and very fun. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please just like and